All right, so today I don't really have a whole lot going on here. Well, I'm going to be working on the plow here during the week, but uh, I'm waiting on parts. They're supposed to show up here at some point today, so I don't have anything I can do today. And the reason I'm here today is because I took last night off of work because we had a damn snowstorm roll through. And I did not feel like driving 40 miles to work in that mess. So I actually just spent three and a half hours plowing snow. I got my place done. I got dad, mom and dad's place done. I got the neighbors done. So anyway, this video, uh, actually something I've been thinking about talking about for a while because it always seems to come up whenever we're on the subject of plowing and plows here on this channel. Um, and what really triggered it was this idiot yesterday that commented on my video named Michigan Farm Boy. Um, he was trying to troll. He was trying to be a troll, but he was failing miserably. But basically, some of the comments he said are cause for concern because whether or not he was being an idiot or not, regardless of him, there are people in this world that really think this way. And as members of agriculture, it's something that we really need to try to put down because it is not a good way of thinking and it is not good for agriculture, public image, and whatnot. So basically, um, I guess I've been rambling and you don't even know what the hell I'm rambling about. Weed control chemical weed control in, in particular. Um, now, before we get too far into this, I am not bashing chemical weed control because I do not think it's a bad thing. I am not gonna bash no-till because I do not think it is a bad thing. I am not gonna bash organic because I do not think it's a bad thing, although organic is a lot of work for, I mean, yeah. Organic's a whole other ball game that I don't, I just can't wrap my head around it because it's a lot of work for not a whole lot of reward. Other than the fact that you do tend to get a premium price, but, well, we're not organic. Let's get off that subject. Weed control. So, basically, and his whole, the whole thing started, he said, because I had made the comment that mallboard plows are good for getting, controlling mare's tail. Because mare's tail is resistant to Roundup. And Liberty will kill it. Extend will kill it. Um, Impact will kill it, which Impact is a trade name, not a chemical name. I can't remember the name of the chemical, but Impact and Armazone are two of the trade names that are of the same chemical, and I cannot remember for life me the name of the chemical. But, I mean, there are things that will kill it for now. 20 years ago, Roundup killed everything. And here we sit. It's getting to the point where Roundup is almost not even worth buying because I bought all of the kill of grass. Um, but basically, I had made the comment that Mulgore plows were good for controlling mare's tail. He made the comment that they had switched to Liberty soybeans because it smoked, liver, it smoked the mare's tail before it even got started. True statement. Liberty kills mare's tail. Well, then I replied back that, hold on, I want to get this right. Let me find the comment. It, I, I pinned this comment, so if you're really interested in what happened, because it turned into a 36 comment thread, and basically by the middle of it, like the first 12 comments are really relevant, and after that, he just started getting fucking weird. But, uh, da -da 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 I replied, well, first off, he spelled mare's tail wrong. He spelled it M-A-Y-E-R-S space tail. But um, I used, I, I replied, I use Extend Beans, half the price of Liberty, which ex Liberty is a good chemical, but it is an expensive chemical. And Extend is, doesn't really cost any more than Roundup. Extend is a fairly cheap chemical. It works just as good. So I said, half the price of Liberty and works just as well. True. Roundup, I, then I said, Roundup used to stop Mare's Tail 2 until it didn't. True. Liberty and Extend will eventually do the same thing. True. Chemicals are not a long-term solution. They are a band-aid. True. He didn't like that, 
and basically it turned into a 36 comment thread. So, again, I'm not bashing chemical weed control. Chemical weed control is a good thing. It has gotten agriculture to where we are today, but there are two ways to approach it. There is a responsible way to approach it, and there's a irresponsible, irresponsible way to approach it. Now, by nature, because of natural selection and because of the way we apply chemical to begin with, chemical weed control has a life, or, or weed control for a specific chemical. Let's just pick on Roundup because it's the, one that's, it's the one that everybody's heard of. When Roundup first came out, it would smoke, it, it would smoke everything except for what it was designed not to care what was designed to not be killed by it. It was a non-selective herbicide. It would kill everything except for like woody plants because it's not strong enough. But over time, because of A, misuse, because guys wouldn't spray the recommended rate, they would think, hey, why should I spray 32 ounces when I can kill it with 20 ounces? And over time, that allows weeds that escape to build up resistance. Those are the ones that reproduce seed stock. And next thing you know, you have an entire seed stock of resistant weeds. That is basically the same process that is going to happen with every chemical by nature just because of natural selection. Now, you will never initially see a resistant weed out in the middle of a field because if you're a good applicator, the middle of the field, you're, you got full boom width, you're up to speed with your sprayer, everything's working like it should. Where you initially will start seeing resistant weeds is ditch banks, fence lines, tree lines, basically out on the edge of the field where all you are getting is one nozzle on the tip of the boom getting a full rate of application. Like if, if your band is, if your band under your tip is this wide and you have another tip here and, and your boom goes off this way, this half of the tip is going to get a full rate of application because you have that slight overlap between this tip and this tip. The end tip, which is also normally a half rate tip, that way you can overlap a foot on your booms or whatever, however you have your booms laid out to work for your overlap. So that outside half of the fan is only going to get a half rate of herbicide no matter what along the edge of the field. So you have some weeds that it will kill you have some weeds that it'll just piss off of the same species of weed. And that is how you create resistance, is repeated exposure to non-lethal doses of a herbicide to a weed. That's how Roundup became resist, or that's how weeds became resistant to Roundup. Repeated application of a non-lethal dose of a herbicide will create resistant weeds. That be so. You can be the best herbicide applicator in the world. Eventually, you are still going to create resistant weeds and they will start along the field borders. Or if you're a piss poor applicator and you're cheap ass and you're not applying the recommended rate to kill weeds, you're just going to create an entire field full of resistant weeds because you're not applying the recommended rate and eventually it's going to stop working. That's also what happened with Roundup. So, The ex when Roundup first came out, it was kind of slow to be adopted because Roundup came out in the early 90s. And in the early 90s, I don't want to say moldboard plying was still commonplace, but moldboard plying was still a thing, and most guys were still cultivating everything. Although they had switched, generally switched to chisel plowing, the cultivator was still a very real thing in the early to mid 90s. Every, most everybody still had one around. And you have, just like every other technology, you have early adopters and you have late adopters. And the guys that were diehard, full width tillage and cultivating tended to be slower to adopt Roundup than the guys that are early adopters and saw value in it and wanted to get on the bandwagon as soon as possible. The later guys wanted to see what how the earlier guys got along with it before they decided to put time and money into getting set up to use it. 
So with Roundup, you saw a greater lifespan before you saw resistance because it was a little slower to be adopted. Now, everybody sprays. It is commonplace. Every, you don't drive by a farm that doesn't have a sprayer in some way, shape, or form. Everybody sprays. And 95% of farms don't have cultivators anymore. We've flip-flopped in the last 20 years. Everybody sprays. Nobody cultivates. So you no longer really have those late adopters on herbicides, especially with things becoming resistant like they are. Guys that have issues fighting resistant weeds, the minute a new chemical comes out that's gonna fight the resistant weed, bam, we're on it. We're gonna start using this chemical. So where you have like a 20, 25 year lifespan on Roundup because it was slow to be adopted, nowadays, Chemicals that get adopted fast enough that you take that 20, 25 year lifespan, now it's down to like 10, 15 years before you see resistance. Like Liberty, Liberty's been around long enough. I don't know if it's true or not, but I have heard that they are already seeing Liberty resistance down south, which is the same place that Roundup resistance started. Roundup started down south and worked its way north. So Liberty's probably going to follow the same pattern that Roundup did. It's going to start it's going to have resistance it starts down south works its way up north by nature you will never have a herbicide that eventually does not come, become resistant does that mean we need to stop using herbicide by all means no herbicide is a great tool to have and basically what I, the way I want to explain this is the way when I was down at Purdue my counselor my guidance counselor, who was also happened to be a professor for a couple of my classes, in one of his classes, he said this. He says, if you want to be successful in this toolbox or in this, if you want to be successful in this industry, your goal should be to have the largest toolbox available to you that is practical for your situation. So basically, in layman's terms, I'm going to put it to you this way. You take your car into a shop to get work done. Do you want to see a little plastic Harbor Freight toolbox full of Walmart brand tools on the bench? Or do you want to walk in and see a snap-on box the size of the wall full of every tool under the sun? Guys that only lean on herbicides for weed control, those are your guys with the Harbor Freight plastic toolbox full of Walmart tools. Guys that have a broad range of weed control practices, whether it be herbicide, tillage, cultural practices, cover cropping, the more tools you have available to you, the better prepared you are for long-term weed control issues. And that, that doesn't even just go for weed control, that goes for pest control, goes for soil health, soil management. That's ag in general. The bigger the toolbox you have available to you, the better off you're going to do. Now, that being said, it's the largest toolbox that is practical for you in your situation. And bigger guys have the opportunity to have a larger toolbox. Smaller guys, not so much. Like me, I, I am limited by time. I'm limited by weather. Well, every farmer's limited by weather, but because I work full time and try to do this on the side, I'm limited by time and my time is usually limited by the weather because I generally get screwed because I don't take the right days off of work. So you, nobody will ever be perfect at this. And if anybody ever says that they're perfect, they're full of shit. You can never be 100% prepared for every situation under the sun when it comes to this kind of stuff but you can do the best that you can with what you have and try to better yourself and have and improve or do what you can to mitigate not being ready for it. So basically what this idiot that I'm talking about said when I brought up the fact that what's he going to do because he said he didn't like the fact that I was talking about mallboard plowing it, it, it sounds like he's just against mallboard plowing in general. Which you'll have that. A lot of guys that don't understand mallboard plowing because it's been under practice for so long think that it's bad and they're idiots because they don't understand mallboard plowing and they don't know how to do it anymore. But regardless, he said, I, I told him, I says, 
what are you going to, I asked him, I said, what are you going to do when Liberty quits killing Mary's tail? And he said, well, we'll just wait on the next, or we'll just, by that time, they'll have another chemical to kill it just like they did with Roundup. What if they don't? Because right now there are only, there's only 26 modes of action that we use to create herbicides. And basically a mode of action is a certain area of a plant genome or physiology or reproductive system that a certain chemical targets that certain spot on a plant to kill it. Now, there's 26 of them that we use right now. Not all 26 are gonna work on every plant. Some of them only work on grasses, some of them only work on broadleaf, some of them only work on woody plants, some of them only work on water plants, some of them only work on it, it, I mean, not all 26 modes of action are going to work on every plant. So you can figure that only half of them are going to, only half of them at a maximum are only going to work on any given plant at any given time. So I'm not going to say we're never going to run out of herbicides, but that's not a good way to look at it. You shouldn't say, well, we'll just use this herbicide until it doesn't work anymore, and then hopefully by that time we got, a, we got another one. That, is, that mentality right there just scares the living shit out of me because first off, you have an uneducated... Any, I'm not saying anything that anybody who farms right now or anybody who's involved in ag doesn't already know this is no news for anybody but you got to remember that we are in a period of time in history where we are dealing with a very uninformed general public about the stat or about the current state of agriculture and you're talking about people that think that farmers are trying to kill them that gmos cause cancer that the food comes from the grocery store farming is is a pointless activity Farmers are supposed to be stewards of the land. We are supposed to leave it better than how we found it. So, we already know that there are herbicides that kill it, that kill beneficial insects. We, we have herbicides that kill ladybugs. That's not good because ladybugs are a very... I can't even remember the stats on how many... Uh, hurt that on how many hurtful uh crop pests ladybugs are pred natural predators to and how many millions of dollars worth of pesticides that, that things like ladybugs save us every year but ladybugs we have herbicides that kill ladybugs not intentionally but it just happens we have herbicides that kill bees if we if if we lose bees i think they said the human race will go extinct within four years we have herbicides that kill butterflies. Again, another pollinator. Um, we have herbicides that are harmful to um, lightning bugs. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but I have noticed that in the last 15 years, there is not nearly as many lightning bugs as there was when I was a kid. I used to be able to go out on any summer night and there was this place was just crawling with lightning bugs and now there's never any. So, we have all these herbicides, granted, I can't stress this enough, I'm not saying herbicide use is bad, I'm saying irresponsible use of herbicide is bad, and overuse of herbicide is bad. So, why on earth would somebody want to set up their farming practice to where the sole tool they have to control weeds is a herbicide? Because you work yourself into a corner. And no-till guys are really good for this. Not grant, I, I'm not saying no-till is bad. Irresponsible no-till is bad. Again, irresponsible herbicide use is bad. Irresponsible no-till is bad. Just like irresponsible tillage is bad. Um, but no-till guys, they refuse to think that any form of tillage, they, they just, they, no. No, hardcore no-till guys will not own a fucking tillage tool anymore. But how many no-till guys do you see throughout the season have to spray th two, three times to keep their weeds under control? Every time you run over that field with a sprayer, you're creating another chance to create a resistant weed. 
and it doesn't happen overnight, but you start doing that over three, four, five, six, seven years, that all starts to add up. And that doesn't sound like a whole lot of time, but remember, it took 20 years for Roundup to become resistant. Liberty's probably been around for what, 12 years, maybe? And we're already seeing resistance to it. That time span is shortening for resistant weeds. And every and the other thing that the public thinks about when they think of herbicide or pesticide use is they think of super bugs and super weeds that can't be killed by anything. It, what are we going to do eventually when we have a, when we create a weed that's resistant to everything? The only thing that a weed will never be resistant to, except for Johnson grass. Johnson grass is a whole different story. The only thing that you will never have a weed resistant to is iron. You cut that weed, you cut that weed off at the roots, or you bury it where it can no longer get sunlight. It is going to die, guarantee it. And people are then the guys bring up on tillage. Well. Every time you till the soil, you may bury a germinated weed, but you bring up seed stock that's been buried in the previous tillage pass. And weeds, um, depend, depending on the species, their, their seed can sit in the ground for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years and still be viable if you bring it back up into the germination range in the topsoil. But if you bring that seed stock up and you stay on your weed control, even if that seed stock germinates, if you can get it killed before it has a chance to seed, you just reduce your seed stock because you took that viable seed, sprouted it, that plant was not able to create more seed. And basically every time you do that, you reduce the seed stock available for seed ger for weed germination in your soil. Now, whether you killed it with cultivation or if you kill it with a herbicide or whatever the important point is you got it killed before it had a chance to create more seed and that's what that is the entire that is the ultimate end goal of weed control is you really 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 need to get that weed killed before it has a chance to go to seed because once it's gone to seed your battle's already lost like mayor's mayor's tail since we're on that subject it, it create it can create up to 2,000 seeds per plant that's a significant number. But anyway, um, hopefully this is all making sense because I'm kind of losing track. So basically, the whole my whole point here is chemical weed control is not a bad thing. Tillage is not a bad thing. If you do all of it wrong, it is all terrible. And the scary part is there are people out there, and I'm, it's, it's, it's a minority of farmers. It's, the vast majority of farmers are very responsible with what they do because in the end, responsible, responsible farming saves them money. But there are a small minority of farmers out there that are just cheap asses. And those are the guys that create resistance and they have the mentality that well, we'll just spray it until that spray doesn't work anymore, and then we'll go on to the next one. And that's 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 a very scary mentality to have because that's what gives agriculture a bad name, and that's what gives a misinformed public more ammunition to come after the agricultural industry as it stands right now, which is the last thing we need to be doing. So, hopefully all this is making sense. Um... This is probably one of them few times where I should have sat down and made a list of things I wanted to talk about and checked them off one by one, but I was just kind of throwing this video together in a hurry. But long story short, um, we have other tools available to us to kill weeds, and a combination of multiple strategies is the best course of action to mitigate the risk of creating resistance and to lengthen the usable lifespan of a herbicide in any, no matter what it is. Like, like, I can't stress it enough. The more you use a herbicide, the more passes you make over a field with a sprayer, the more opportunity you have to create a resistant weed, and that is not good. Um, 
and like no-till guys. Well, we can't run any tillage over here. We're straight no-till. We'll fuck our ground up. If we, no. Like, they make, at least I'm pretty, well, I know they still make them, no-till cultivators. I know Henniker makes them. I know Orthman makes them. Basically, they look like a great big... They're basically, for all intents and purposes, built on a strip-till bar. And all, all the only thing on the unit is there is a great big heavy straight coulter blade with deck bands on it and a great big it's not great big it's it's a 30 inch sweep that's got that's got real narrow wings on it and basically all you do is you run down the row that that blade cuts the trash enough to let the shank go through all that thing does is it goes up you know however deep you have it set half inch three quarters of an inch cuts those weeds off, lifts the soil back up, and sets it right back down. And other than the track from where the shank went through, you can't tell. I mean, there's always another way. And I don't know, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Chemical weed control is not the end all be all solution. And that's what guys keep trying to go towards because it's faster. It's it's not even really cheaper. Like back when I still cultivated everything, I could cultivate. What did I have that figured at? With the 1800 and my four row cultivator, I was using three quarters of a gallon an acre to cultivate. So it was like, I think at that point, diesel was still fairly cheap. And I think it came out to like a buck 70 or something an acre to cultivate. You're going to spend a lot more than that. You're going to spend about 20 bucks an acre, 20 to 25 bucks an acre spraying if you have a good herbicide program. And that's just for the herbicide. That's not for the diesel to run the sprayer or to pay for the sprayer. That's just the herbicide. So even if I had to go cultivate three or four times to keep the weeds knocked down, I'm at like six bucks worth of diesel in my time. Cultivating ain't that expensive. It just takes time. And... That's what guys bitch about is, oh, we ain't got the time. Well, it's now or later. Eventually, it's going to come to the point where we're going to have to do something to kill all these resistant weeds. Do we do it now or later? But, like I say, I'm not saying that everybody needs to go out and cultivate every acre. I'm not saying everybody has to go out and mallboard plow every acre. If you have no, like, well, like mallboarding. I'm going to try to work in like 20 acres a year. This year I'm going to do a little bit more because I got 40 acres of weed out and that wheat stubble is getting plowed again. But basically it's probably going to be whatever I have for wheat stubble, that's what's going to get mall board plowed. So between like 30 and 20 and 30 acres a year is what I want to do. That's not everything. Just pick a couple fields. Or if you don't want to do, if there's certain fields you don't want to do, if you have fields that are known trouble fields, Go do a little more intense tillage on them. Doesn't even have to be a mulberry plow. Put some big old honking, put some big old honking twist shovels on your chisel plow and go bury that shit. Do something. If you don't want to cultivate everything, if you have some fields that are known problem childs, go run a cultivator over them once a year so that so you don't got to spray twice. It's it's not hard. It's just going to take time, and that's what all that's what the guys bitch about is how we ain't got the time. Well. Mm -hmm. I work full time and I still find the time to do this shit. So anyway, this video is probably going to get a lot of dislikes. I bet this is going to cause some, uh, cause some interesting comments down in the comment section. And I, I bet it's, I'm, I'm curious to see how this turns out. I bet, I bet this is there. I bet there's going to be some people throwing a bitch fit and saying how wrong I am, but Fuck it is what it is. This is why I'll never be a main, one of the mainstream ag, ag guys on YouTube is because I guess you could just say I have an extreme view of what ag should be. I'm not saying that we need to go back to farming with this shit. That's stupid. It would never work. But just because the technology and the practices are old does not mean they're invalid. I mean, the way we farm today has only really been the way it is now since like the 70s 
That's an, and that's probably even a stretch, probably the 80s up until now. That's in the terms of agriculture, that is a really, really short lifespan. And everything that we have quit doing or forgotten about from that point to now worked for five, six hundred years, however long it's been before that. So it can't be wrong. It's just, I don't know. But anyway, like I say, I'm curious to see how all this turns out. Curious to see how many people are throwing bitch fits down in the comment section. Like I say, if you want to see that Michigan farm idiot, I pinned that comment over on my last video working on the plow. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and throw this video up and we'll see what kind of, see what kind of drama we can cause today. So anyway, that's it for this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one.